Hey folks, editor and producer Jason here. Usually I do my best work from behind the scenes, lurking in the shadows, but today I wanted to bring you a very special episode of On the Porch with Front Porch Music. We had such an amazing year, full of awesome moments with every single person we interviewed. We couldn't possibly fit every great moment into one highlight episode. It would take us hours to listen to it, but we wanted to bring some attention to some of the very, very best moments from the last year with a whole bunch of different artists. If you check the description, you should see timestamps for where these clips are coming from in terms of episodes. If you did miss an episode this year, I highly recommend you go back and listen to them. If you like what we do, you should rate and review the podcast. It's the best way to show your support for what we do here at the Front Porch. And uh, also drop a follow or subscribe to us on whatever platform you're on. If you wanted to keep up with new episodes, that's the best way to do it. And we should be back in just a few weeks with the first episode of Season 2 of On the Porch. I'm really looking forward to what 2023 brings us, but for now, let's take a look back at 2022. Starting with a clip from our episode with Owen Riegling, who actually wrote and recorded the theme song that you can hear in the background right now. Enjoy the episode, and we will see you soon for Season 2. Um, OER is where your so, first single, well. Smoke Man, started from, though, too, right? That was like your major project, technically? Yeah, it was a third semester project. Oh yeah, or, yeah, yeah, third semester, I wrote Smoke Man that semester, and I was like, this is cool, I should record this, and then I just did it, and that's what it is. Did you do it I love yourself? that song. Pardon? Logan loves it, I want to know if you did it all by yourself. <laughs> I, thank you, Logan. And, uh, You're welcome. I did a lot of it by myself, yeah, I had um, my friend Jen from school recorded the bass, and I did all like the audio work, but I had other musicians come in and play. Um, Jeremy, who is like the social media guy there still, he played the drums on it and, um, cool. that was a lot of fun. And then I just experimented, like we had like two, three months to make a song. So I was just messing around, doing mm-hmm. lots of different vocal stuff and writing and different arrangements. And I, there were so many different versions of that song, but I'm just going to say, we need to hear the other versions of it. Yeah. Like there's tons of different, like, it all follows the same structure, but like different parts yeah. and, and elements to the song that, and different mixes. Like I mixed it like four or five different times. Mm. How um, did you pick the one that you wanted? Like uh, it was, was the this... first mix. The first it mix was? is what we came back to. <laughs> yeah. That's how it always is. Yeah. Like if you are really into something and you dive in for the first time, that's usually the best with anything. Like if you're really into it and then you try right. to like refine it. I mean, it's good to refine stuff, and it definitely took elements of that, but you just yeah, go I too mean, far. You know? We've heard that from other artists, too. Like, Dustin Bird kind of said the same thing about his latest single. Like, he's he was obsessed with the first conception of it and just kind of went from there. Yeah. I it's not it's that good. easy all the time, though. It can't be. No, that's true. I mean, <laughs> the first time is, like, you're following your gut, right? This feels right in the moment. You don't know what you're making yet. You're just going with something. I need. It, I can hear this. I can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. Just you're going with it. But then after you've heard it, 10, 15, 20, more like a hundred times, you start to you 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 start to lose some creativity because you're just focused on what's already there and you can't really hear it another way. Mm-hmm. So then you. That's when you start wrecking it. I find because you're mm-hmm. trying to find something that it doesn't need. You know what I mean? Being from a small town, I, I would have assumed that country music was kind of in your veins. But earlier you said that, that country music wasn't really your thing growing up. So when, or do you know, like, can you pinpoint the, the point when country music became a point of interest to you? Or like, where you, when you became a fan or when you, when you realized that you enjoyed writing country music? It was all Eric Church. That's where it... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jenna, we can just I, I, interview you about Owen. Yeah, that's Jenna. I'll just yeah, I'll just yeah. log off. <laughs> yeah, um, we don't even need you here. Yeah, I I wouldn't say that I wasn't into country music. I just I preferred listening to um, I don't even know like what you'd call it. I just wasn't. I mean, it was always around. Like my grandpa loved country music. We'd listen to AM radio all the time. We'd, it's just always, it would always be on in their kitchen. You know how you have like the grandparent that just leaves the radio on all the time? 20 CKNX. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But I'd say my, my love for like modern kind of sounding country music happened when I was in high school and like going to high school parties, everybody's cranking country music and it's like the classic, like the Eric Church stuff, the older stuff, like the Chief record. And mm. Oh, um, that's such a great record. 
that's my favorite one for sure. Mm. I guess that's just the one that, well, I guess that's the one that sent him. And uh, yeah, I just have a lot of memories tied to that, that album. And Springsteen was the song. I think Jenna already knows that. That's the song that I heard. I was like, this is cool. Like, I want to make this kind of music. <laughs> yeah, actually, now that you say that, I, I, I can kind of like hear, hear the, the influence, especially with for Smoke sure. Man. For sure. I, uh, Eric Church is the biggest influence on me, for sure. Your brand cool. isn't necessarily outlaw country, but it almost is. You're also, I don't know how to say his last name, Tyler Childers? Yeah. Childers? Yeah. You're a fan of that guy, right? Oh, yeah. He's Big pretty fan. dope. I think I'm just a fan of what's different. Like, mm. that's the kind of stuff that I don't really make music like Tyler that, like, I like to, I write lots of songs that I try to, like, be like that, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's my lane, but I'm really into what he's doing and, and just awesome like yeah I feel like you're creating cool. your own like space because you're also not something we hear everywhere we go like there's a particular brand if you will that is Owen Riegling and you can hear exactly where your influencers are from but it's still like uniquely you not to like blow your head up too much here obviously but, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. I appreciate that that's actually like such an awesome compliment because I don't even know what I'm doing like I feel like um I don't necessarily I feel like you know a little bit what you're doing I know, but like when I'm writing a song, like a lot of times I'm like, what did I just write? Like, it's not country. Mm. It's not, I don't even know what genre this is. And I run it by my band and I'm like, what even is this? They're like, I don't know what this is, but. But we dig it, just, right? <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm the one singing it, it's just me, right? So yeah. it's country. It's, it's some influence from other stuff. Like this new stuff that I'm working on right now is like very different, but I'm excited yeah. for it. Next up, let's revisit our episode with Riley Taylor, who won the Emerging Artist Showcase at Boots and Hearts in 2021. He talks a little bit about that experience. We're also going to hear a clip from Jenna about how she had a near-death experience on a plane to New Brunswick. I think we should talk about Boots and Hearts a little bit. We should talk about Boots and Hearts because... You blew the crowd out of the water. I wasn't even there and I heard about it, like hundreds of kilometers away. Yeah, like, and for those who don't know, Riley won, uh, was... became the Boots and Hearts uh, Emerging Artist uh, last year. And it was incredible to see you on there. Um, it was a really in- like crazy lineup. Uh, there was a lot of talent there. Like oh. all yeah. of us all of us who were there who were working were like, this is probably one of the best showcases that they've had. Um, and to be honest with you, no one had heard of you. <laughs> no, I, I, oh, <laughs> and, I, I know. <laughs> and like, we were like, who's this Riley guy? And then we like tried to find you online and and couldn't find any songs and I was so anxious to hear hear what you like what you had and when you got on the stage everybody like the whole crowd was just like on your side from the moment you stepped up there yeah I mean what was that whole experience like wild just like the whole thing it was like a twilight zone type of thing like it was like just right from the time that I showed up, like I was, you know, not late, but getting there, like everybody's kind of getting going and stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I walked past this herd of people. And because as far as I was concerned and knew, like, I was like, Oh, there's eight people in the finals. There's going to be a group of eight people there. (laughs) Not even like, just so oblivious man like and so i walk past you're only playing the largest stage in canada (laughs) yeah yeah so i mean i really was like had no idea what i was getting into type thing so i walk past this group of people and go right to the stage like (laughs) idiot so (laughs) i go out there and buddy's kind of looking at me a little sideways and he's like oh uh you know like he doesn't know who I am. And he's like, uh, can I help you type of thing? And I'm like, I'm looking for the Emerging Area Showcase. And he points right to that big group of people that I just walked by. Cause I'm like, I'm like, oh, there's no way that's them. So I'm like, oh, okay. So, so I go back and then I start talking to people. And then it's like, you know, the first person I'm talking to is uh, Jesse Slack. And he's there with Daryl Scott and he's got his band there. And, and then I meet the next guy and he's there with his manager and he's like showing me his Spotify playlist. And I'm like, Oh, so this, Oh, this is legit. Like, you know, <laughs> this is, uh, wow. I I'm, I'm in deep water here. And then uh, I'll never forget it. Like we, uh, the, the guy that was kind of rallying us around and he was doing like the, the stage management part of it for us. He was doing kind of like a inventory for 
the different bands and like what kind of equipment they might need when they get on the stage or that sort of thing. So he's kind of doing a roll call until the bands go up and they need whatever the microphone for the bass drum or whatever. So I come up, it's just me and my guitar, and he's kind of looking past me a little bit. And he goes, Oh, uh, the boys aren't here yet, like me and the band. <laughs> Yeah. And I just, I'm like, nope, we're all here. And he's just like, <laughs> from that point on, like everybody's kind of looking at me like, uh, like a train wreck about to happen. <laughs> oh no! And, oh, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them because I'm like, oh my, like just, I, I've never felt that like oblivious in my life. Like it was just like, oh my god. Did that and motivate then, you, or did that kind of make you freak scary. out, freak out a little bit? From that, like, from that point on after that, like, it was literally, fuck it. Because, like, it, it, it's like, what am I going to do? Like, I'm already 16 hours away from home to come for this audition, essentially. And it's like, yeah, like, fuck it. I'm here. And so, whatever. Like, it's it's kind of, i got to do it. Like, I'm not, I can't back out now type of thing. Had, but it's, Had sorry. you not heard of this before? Like, Boots and Hearts and the Emerging Artist Show. Kate, like, was this brand spank new when you showed up to boot, like to Burles Creek? Well, in a way, because I I'd heard of it before, and like I had buddies that had, had gone to the festival before, and like talked about you know how crazy it was and all this stuff. But that's like that to me is like every other weekend is a pretty wild weekend, like in Fredericton where they got a good band playing, right? So I'm thinking like you know, it's a music festival. And I'd been to Cavendish before. And I'm thinking, okay, it's kind of, you know, in the and same And that's a realm. big one too. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And I'm like, okay. But really didn't grasp. Nobody what... thought to like mention it to you or give you a heads up either, eh? Well, I I'm sure they did. <laughs> and you were like, nah, it's fine. As, as you guys know, I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not totally on top of everything, especially like, on social media and on like and anything online like it that hard to keep up with i find it, but um i don't know i'm sure somewhere along the way somebody had mentioned something but i just like oh whatever you know <laughs> be all right. but, but you know what that that may have actually worked in your favor because like you came in like you went in with not the highest expectations so like you get there and you're like okay well let's just do it you're a straight yeah. up underdog yeah. I, and you yeah. won. Yeah. So, it, that, like, at the end of, of your first set, people were screaming your name. Like, was that weird? Did you hear did them you hear from them? the stage? Yeah. 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 Oh, I could hear them, like, loud and clear. And it was, like, just, like, crazy. Because it was, like, I've only ever played, like, within New Brunswick, really. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's... After a while, you get doing the same circuits and stuff. And I'm, I'm not complaining by any stretch. Like, it's, it's great. But it's, it's usually, like, the same group of people, roughly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, within certain regions of the province, you have your regulars. And God bless them, because we need them. Because, yeah. you know, they show up, right? Like, the first couple gigs, you get a response kind of like that. And it's a wicked time and all this stuff. But after a while, it's, you know, like, you almost get used to each other type of thing. So it's still good, but it's like, uh, you know, they've heard this before, like this, this, that sort of thing. Right. So as far as a response like that, it's just like, oh, my God, like, it, I guess I guess I, you know, I guess I do belong or like, you know, I guess I, you know, this might work out like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, so I couldn't believe it. it was, it's it was funny. You, you telling us right now, you look overwhelmed again, <laughs> like thinking, like, yeah. like thinking about it and reminding yourself, like, how did I feel? You're just like, well, it was this is crazy. Those, oh, it was one of those things like just so unexpected in the best way possible. No kidding. And like, I'll just, I'll never forget it. Cause I was just like, what is going on? Like, it, there's no well, way. Like, like, this, like this showcase is, Huge. Huge. Like it's launched it's launched everyone's careers. Like Tim Hicks, Tebe, like everybody, like James Barker band. Like yeah. does that like now that you've on the other side of it, does that kind of ring does that blow your mind that you're part of that history? It's wild. It's wild, man. And these are all guys that like I've paid a lot of money to go see at like a festival or, you know, at a local concert, like and it's like wow. Like, you know, 
because now it's like I'm not saying that I'm up there, but I'm saying like there's a list and now my name's on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my God. So and it, it, it's good because that kind of gives me the, the boot in the air that I need sometimes to really kind of, you know, get in gear and like get motivated, get focused, like because the opportunity's there, right? I'm actually scared of New Brunswick right now because the last time I went there, it was right after Boots and Hearts and I was taking a flight to Fredericton because I was going to the Canadian fastball um, tournament. Nice. And, okay, n- fun fun trip. However- This is all brand new information to me. Yeah, getting there. I was going as a spectator. My flight. So I'm going and I've my flight is delayed. I'm hungover because Boots and Hearts is where I literally got dropped off from. <laughs> and then- uh, so we finally get on our flight after, like three hours late. It's a one and a half hour flight, right? Or something like that. Maybe two hours. Yeah, so I, like that. I get, on my, get on the plane and I immediately, I'm a sleeper on the plane. Like I immediately like lights out. So I fall asleep yeah. and I wake up to an old man holding my hand. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck am I missing? And also this was a short sleep. We landed in Ottawa because one of our engines like all, all but burst into <laughs> flames. My mom's watching the tracker. And it's like turning around and flying back over Ottawa. My mom's like, I, anyways, our, we had to emergency land and we conveniently landed at the Ottawa airport, sat there for six hours. They had to get a new pilot. They had to, the plane had to come from Montreal. Cause that pilot was like, that's traumatizing. Cause he was like, I'm going to land this plane in the water. No, not the water. But anyways, like right beside who, my parents he, house, had no, <laughs> he had no, he had no where he was landing. So he got sent home. We literally landed on an airstrip like it was fine but i woke up i missed the whole thing everybody was like seat belts on like sit tight and this old man's holding my hand and i wake up i literally wake up on the ground like what did i miss and they're telling me this and i was like oh shit turn my phone on my mom's like what the fuck is going on why are you not moving <laughs> she thinks the wow. plane is now anyways an old man was holding your hand he thought we were going down Aww. so i would have <laughs> That is the That's, sweetest thing I've yeah. heard, and you didn't even notice. I was he just needed, he needed some help. Anyways, yeah. when I, you like, opened with that, I was a little questionable. Me too. I was like, "What did that, that old man do?" Story. Well, I mean, his wife was beside him. They were like, "She's sleeping, and we're gonna die. We should hold her hand." This is the oh. thing. Anyways, so we get stuck. I in could Ottawa cry. Oh my god, stop! It's fine now. It's like 2015. We all survived. I hope he's doing well. He was old. What if he's not he doing dead. well? <laughs> Anyways, I had to get on another plane to go to Fredericton from Ottawa, and I was like. Holy fuck, I need to set it. I'm just yeah. scared. I didn't even, I missed the fearful part and I was like, I don't want to get on this plane. Yeah, probably not feeling like getting on another plane after that. No, not for a while. Um, oh. Hilarious, right? Now it's funny. That's what that's the shit you gotta put on your Instagram. Yeah. No, she was <laughs> that, asleep. She had no idea what's happening. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be a good story. Just like buddy's hand holding yours. Hmm. Get views. I, I mean woke up scary. And like, scary, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that so is I, wild. Yeah, is wild. drove home from New Brunswick. Thankfully, I was like pretty scared to get on a plane for a bit, but because that's like not that doesn't happen. Like, that's not a huge. That doesn't happen all the time. Oh, that's and be, like I wonder what the odds are. Literally, like the like, flying is the safest mode of transportation in the whole world. Yeah, my flight was not safe. Are you shitting me? Next, we're going to hear a clip from our episode with Elise Saunders. She talked a lot about her creative process and how music became a huge part of her life. Really interesting stuff. Take a listen. So did music come natural to you? Like, did you grow up around music and like, was like, did it just naturally come flowing out of you? Or is it something that obviously you've had to work at it, but is it something that's like runs through your veins? Yes, it's part of me. Um, and I wouldn't be the same person without music for sure. It's music is definitely my therapy and my outlet. And, um, and that's like one of the biggest things for me and why I love to do it. Um, and I've been songwriting since I was just a little kid. My mom was an at home songwriter. Um, she just did it cause she was just always, um, a singer songwriter for fun at home. And, um, I just remember going through her guitar case and pulling out her sheets of songs that she had written. And I just remember, I think I was like, five years old or something I just remember thinking that is so cool to be able to express your thoughts on paper and be able to sing it um so I started doing that at a young age just because I thought that was so neat and um have you ever recorded any of her songs I should I should record that would be so cool I should for Mother's Day yeah 
I definitely that's a that's a cool idea. That's, that's so cute. adorable. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her listen to this. I, mean, I, know, I, was just, I was just thinking that we'll have to keep that a surprise. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be so cute. So your mom was a songwriter, so that's obviously kind of where you got your inspiration from. So I guess it's safe to say she was your first inspiration. She was my one of my very first inspirations. And then um, it was my dad had bought me my very first karaoke machine. And then that's when I would just like perform at home and pretend I was in this other little world. And, uh, and then I guess they could see that I, I had something, I had some talent. So that's when we first got into singing competitions and we'd move around across Ontario doing these different competitions. But I can say I've never been one for competitions. I kind of hate competitions. <laughs> they were a great start, um, but uh, they definitely changed the way you feel about music. So I only did that for so long and then got into the scene of live music and mm -hmm. and working with people that I looked up to and um, and mentors, I guess. So uh, my dad and I would go to the bars. I'd be underage and uh, he'd be like, can I get my daughter to sing with you for a guest <laughs> song? And they're like, yeah, like, come on up. So I would hop on stage. I'd sing to this audience of people I had never known and uh, I'd have to hop off and then leave the bar. So I've had um, quite um, an elaborate, different kind of experiences, I guess, throughout my career, but I'm really thankful for the live shows really early on for sure. Where do you look for inspiration when you're songwriting and when you're coming, you know, to a writing session with an idea? So for me, I go into the session with, um, my own personal stories, but also I really like taking stories of my friends or just real conversations or, I might be out and I might hear somebody say something that sounds like a really cool title. Um, so in my style of writing, I like to th make things for the most part, really conversational um, as much as I can. And, and then these really big um, empowering courses, but um, yeah, for me, it's just about real, real life situations. And I always say to songwriters, so I've been with my boyfriend um, since high school. So we're high school sweethearts. So I don't, uh... we've had our own fair share of our own personal dramas, but it's like, you've been with somebody for so long. It's like, there's only so much drama and different things I can have in a relationship. So I'm always like any little things, I always blow them out of proportion for a song. <laughs> so, We're going to fight right now, but only yeah, for a song. Yeah. This is going to yeah. sound way worse than it actually was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. And I just try to always think about my audience and what kind of songs are going to relate to them. Um, I did play in the country club scene for quite a while and it's a big part of my development as an entertainer. And um, for people that have seen me at my show, I think they can tell that because I love just interacting with the audience and creating this high energy show, which comes from that club scene of people partying and um, they're all there to hang out or, or hook up or just have a good time and drinks or whatever. So um, I always think about them and my audience and how would they say it and how would they feel about this story? Next up are some clips from our episode with the Hunter Brothers. A little behind the scenes information. This was by far the hardest episode to edit across the entire first season. Shout out to the Hunter Brothers for all showing up, but I did not know we had that much room on the porch. They talk about their hometown in Saskatchewan, a little bit about their time on TikTok, and we also ask Luke about his injury. Check it out. Okay, so you guys are from a pretty small farming town over in Saskatchewan. Yes, we are. It's a small town called Shaunavan, and there are 1,800 people here. Give or take, it tends to, uh, you know, ebb and flow up or down a little bit. It's where we were born and raised. We still reside here, and uh, we love this little community. How close in proximity do you live to one another? <laughs> it depends who you All ask. the same from who to who. We sleep in bunk beds, five high. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering. No, we're spread out over about 12 miles. You're like half the population of the town. <laughs> closing in on. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, closing in on. Just keep <laughs> all the kids. We're doing the best. We keep multiplying over here, so population. <laughs> You're responsible for the economy of Shaunavan. <laughs> what is the town of Shaunavan known for? Like, in general? The Hunter Brothers. Okay, wow. There's actually quite a few people yeah. that have come out of Shaunavan. Um, Haley Wickenheiser. Um, yep. So she oh, is yeah. 
dubbed the best female hockey player to play the game. Um, yeah, so that's one. I'll let you guys chime in with the others. Uh, Braden Colburn, who had a 17-year-long uh, career in the NHL with a couple different teams, won a Stanley Cup in his final year last year. And uh, he, I grew up with him. Uh, he was my best friend growing up. We played all of our minor hockey and then uh, junior uh, against each other. And then he carried on and because uh, he's a lot better than I am. So. <laughs> Currently, there's a young kid, Cole Lynn, playing with the Seattle Kraken. So he is uh, also from Shawnee. We are also known for our water. Yes. When the Queen uh, went back in, I'm not even sure what year, she had water ships specially from Shawnee. So we sit no on way. a huge underground lake. Weird. But, uh, very good yeah, water. So we have very good water. Pile that away into things I did not know. Like, that's no really kind of fascinating. <laughs> and what a so random sh- thing to be known for. So to summarize, the water in Shaunavan specifically breeds hockey players and musicians. Mm, they, when you put it that way. Um, yeah. But you guys have done a whole bunch of TikToks lately. Like there was one recently where there was a piano up on a tractor and going, did, did, didn't look the safest. Um, <laughs> in fact, TikTok came up with, with a pop-up that was like, don't try this at home kind of thing. Um, <laughs> did it actually? <laughs> Did. <laughs> that, that's good. They should probably just do that for all of our videos. Does anybody else try to stop you from doing those things? Or is there any... No. Who's responsible in this group? No, eh? Yeah, we all consent all to it. Are so. you saying responsible? Respons- I, I missed what you were meaning by that. There's no one who, like, checks, like, should we do this? Maybe we shouldn't do that. That might be unsafe. No? No. Farm kids don't have boundaries <laughs> like that. It's fine. <laughs> Safety's overrated. I think... <laughs> Like, every once in a while, we'll have a filter that goes off or, or a flag where we'll go, eh, I don't know if we should do that, but not very often. <laughs> yeah, we should probably have a few more disclaimers out before some of yeah, the Yeah, definitely. Of the meetings, but... <laughs> Social media puts those for you, so don't, you know, whatever. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Somebody yeah. is screwing the filter, which is good. I love it. Still with quarantine and the, and the, the whole lot, last couple of years, it's been an, uh, an interesting couple of years for you all. Particularly, Luke, how, how are you doing? Oh, thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Yeah, very much. Um, I'm doing better, much better. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's been a long year, not going to lie. It was uh, pretty rough for a while. I've, I had um, three different um, surgeries on my or between my elbow and my wrist, and I've regained about 80% on average uh, between the two of what my... my um, yeah, my as far as my range of motion and uh, ultimately what my strength will be compared to what it, it used to be, um, and that'll be kind of my new norm from here on. So it's been uh, it's been a long journey of a lot of pain and a lot of rehab and uh, trying to relearn how to uh, play the guitar. I, I had to switch things up uh, to a large degree as far as the the type of guitar I was using and, and shortening the length of it and dropping a string and all sorts of different things and just kind of getting my, my muscle mer- memory and dexterity back uh, again. But uh, I just played for the first time uh, a show just yes, was that last night. Jeepers. Yeah, that was a long trip home, I guess. So, um, <laughs> last night. And uh, I hit a few wrong notes, but <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's going well for the most part. It's it's coming back pretty good. So yeah, thank you for asking. Oh, it must have felt good to get up back on stage too. Mm-hmm. It did. Yeah, it was very surreal. Yeah, it was one of those those moments where I couldn't really let myself think about it too much. Otherwise, I would have probably broke down. And uh, I was already struggling hitting the right notes as it was. So I had to concentrate extra hard. One thing at a time. <laughs> Five strings at a time. <laughs> Next up are some clips from our episode with Allie Walker. She talks about how she met her husband and also what her favorite instrument is. And the answer might surprise you. You already told me this, but tell Logan how you and Eric met. It's cute. We met at a Rascal Flatts concert at what was Bud Stage. And I'm wearing a Budweiser t-shirt right now. (laughs) Um, Not for any purpose, but... uh, Or no, it was uh, Molson. It was Molson Amphitheater. Now it's Bud Bud Stage. Mm. Um... Just at a Rascal Flatts concert, I was working at a restaurant downtown Toronto called Grace O'Malley's, and I got a free ticket with a regular, and he was there with friends, and we were just introduced as like, hey, Ali's new to town, and she knows absolutely no one, and she needs a lot of help, and <laughs> we started writing songs together, and we were just writing love songs, and we fell in love uh, writing love that's songs. so cute. Oh my god, so like your <laughs> whole relationship cute. started with music, like, like music 
is like everything with about you. <laughs> oh like, yeah. And like, I can't, I can totally get why people want like people that are opposites attract type thing. But for me, like we are the same people and we obviously have music in common and he helps me with my career. And like, I, I couldn't imagine not being with somebody that was in the music industry. Cause it's so hard to understand, especially <clears throat> if you're an up and coming artist and you're in the middle of the grind, there's a lot of times where I was like, should I really like continue doing this? Like how long can I, you know, do the grind? It was him that was like, uh, no, you've been doing this for so long and you're getting so much better every single day. He was the one that was pushing me to like, you know, keep going. So we know, well, I, maybe I know, I don't know if you know, but, um, Ali's favorite instrument is the bagpipes. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not letting you go to that. <laughs> if you're saying oh no, that means you've only heard like terrible bagpipes. Yes, and I'll tell you exactly why. So I grew up <laughs> where I grew up in Ottawa. Um my like my like like we grew up on the Rideau River on the on, on the water, which okay. was awesome. But um my neighbor two doors down, he was an old man, military, and he every morning at like 6 a.m. or like the ass crack of dawn, oh, yeah. he'd go onto his dock, raise a flag up the pole, and just <laughs> what the hell, really? Yeah, so I don't okay, have well, like, the big pipes to me are a little triggering. <laughs> I can understand that. And that's why when people have a sour reaction to bagpipes, I know that they've had a bad experience. <laughs> However, <clears throat> I swear I was half decent. And uh, I started when I was 12 and I was just for some reason good at it right away. So I was like, sure, I'm going to keep doing this. And I competed um, in a bunch of different like levels, like kept going up and my band went there's to- There's bagpipe, co- wait, there's bagpipe competitions and bagpipe yeah. bands? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So this you've probably heard of piling games before. Oh yeah. 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 So there's like a uh, Highland dancing and there's like, they throw the things, yeah. the, like wood. Um, but like a big part of that is bagpipe competition. So there's tons of different types where like, you know, in music, how there's like uh six, eight music, like uh, waltzes or there's, you know, fast music. It's the same in bagpipes. Like there's like Strathbay's reels, marches, um, pibras which are like 10 minute long songs anyways you go as a solo person and you um compete and like literally if you mess up one little baby chirp you're like done so it's a very meticulous like you you practice for 365 days to play this one three minute song it's crazy but it teaches you a lot of discipline but then on your solo stuff you also have your band stuff. So your band might have like, you know, 15 to 30 people in it. And same thing, one person messes up your song, like something that you've been practicing for, for an entire year is messed up. So we went to the North American Championships, was which was Ontario, which was very big for a PEI band. <laughs> and we were terrible for like all of the years before. So we made this bet with this uh, benefactor who was someone that paid for everybody's uh, lessons at this place that I went to called the College of Piping. And we bet him, we were like, um, if we win this, you get, you have to pay for us to go to Scotland to go to the world championships. And he's like, well, you guys were terrible for the last few years. So sure. <laughs> and we went <laughs> and we won first place at the North American championship. Oh my God. Our whole band. So he had to pay for us to go. Did he make good on it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He's like literally the biggest supporter ever. Um, and we went to Ireland as like a pre- uh warm up we did a competition there i don't think we did very well but and then we went to scotland we got fourth in the world cool in the world (laughs) next up is a clip from our episode with danny strong honestly any moment from this episode could have ended up in the best of but i think we chose one that really defines what this episode sounded like the only thing i can think of asking right now is do you ever bring a trombone on stage (laughs) And if not no, why yet. not? You need to. Not yet. But I, I have a plan for the fall. I, there's, a, there's a couple songs I may, I may bring out the bone on. <laughs> the bone. I'll go back to my days of being a boner. <laughs> ah, the five year old in me loves that. <sighs> oh no, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. If you need a professional boner, I'm your girl. Dan Boner, the great composer of the 21st century. <laughs> Dan Boner. Why am I not on there? <laughs> uh, oh, that 
that is the funniest thing I've so ever heard. Funny. <laughs> Sorry. I don't even know how to transition from there. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no segues when you interview Danny. It's fine. But yeah. No. <laughs> If you don't already believe in Love at First Sight, you will after you listen to this clip. It's from our episode with Nate Holler, where he describes how he met his girlfriend. I, I, I met a lady friend uh, oh. like a bit over a year ago. <laughs> yeah. And um, it kind of is just talking about how, how different we are, but somehow it works. She describes, she does a better job, but she describes the first day that she saw me. And I was she was over with some friends and I had been up here working with Callum and I came down the, sl- the stairs in slow-mo and I had those like those chipwreck shorts that are like very short on. I think I was wearing Crocs with really high socks and, uh, and a, and a cut off Budwe- a white Budweiser sweater, but I had spilled red wine all <laughs> over it. And Nate, she... you are painting yourself in the best picture possible. How could anyone not Nate fall in love? Killer. <laughs> I know. And she was like, that's my guy. 100%. I don't know why. It's the Crocs. The Crocs and Socks it did it. Was pro- it was probably the Crocs. Except I think yeah. they were Callum's, uh, they might have been Callum's Crocoffs, like the knockoff uh, Crocs. Uh, Crocoffs. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know why, but definitely like if you look at us, it's it's a it's maybe an odd pair. <laughs> Not that that matters, but it's kind of, it's it's just like describes our thing so so great. So I was excited to put put that out. Our next clip features Dustin Bird playing Jenna's game that she made up called Cowboy Stay or Cowboy Go. Very clever, Jenna. So we're going to play Cowboy Stay or Cowboy Go. So we have five scenarios and you have to decide whether... The Cowboy Stays? Cowboy Stays or Cowboy, cowboy Goes. Okay, easy. Well, maybe yeah. maybe not. Sweet. Okay, let's okay. try. Okay, first one. Should we make it easier the first time? Okay, yeah. This is my freaking game. Yeah, you, I don't know. You make the choices. <laughs> okay, you have free tickets. I'm just here. You have free tickets to a concert... But it's like your least favorite band ever. Does Cowboy Stay or does Cowboy Go? Am I the cowboy in this situation? Yes. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm the this cowboy. Very okay. Story. Um. <laughs> okay. No, that's okay. Um. Definitely cowboy. Definitely cowboy go. I'm. If I if I don't care about it, I, I'm not going. Yeah. Just like live music on a stage isn't enough to stay. Uh no. <laughs> okay. You're getting on a plane, yeah. but you learn it's the pilot's first flight. Cowboy Stay or Cowboy Go? Cowboy Go is fast. Um. <laughs> Cowboy go. Well, you know what? It's pretty tough to be a pilot. You've got to go through a lot of training. And I'm going to go cowboy stay. I'm going to give them the benefit. Yeah, I kind of agree. Because, like, Good it's like they just, been, they, they just finished the training. It's fresh in their head. Yeah. Yeah. But they've never f- flown the plane with human beings. This many human beings. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> Dennis, um, cowboy go. <laughs> I wonder. There's definitely. There, I wonder if there's ever been a time I've been on a plane and that's been the situation. You literally have no idea. Yeah, you have no idea. I feel like I, I'd like cowboy go get a drink and then get on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Now that we know you're scared of horses. Yeah. You're putting out your new song, Cowboy Stay. You have to channel your inner Austin Butler being Elvis, and you have to ride the horse. Cowboy Stay or Cowboy Go? Cowboy Stay. I can do it. I'm not so scared of like of horses where I can't ride one. I'm just a little scared of getting like kicked in the head by one. Kicked? That's the biggest. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Because like I don't. That's rational. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't know all, all the rules and all the techniques, so I think I'd have to like get educated, and then and then I'd have the confidence to ride it. Yeah. Uh, you're on a really bad date, but the food is really good. Cowboy stay or cowboy go? Oh wow, cowboy stay. You know, it might be bad, but the food's great, and and I don't want to be rude. You know, I just, I mean, cowboy stay. There was a moment of panic in your face. There, <laughs> <laughs> you were picturing a really bad date and you're like, oh, food is good, but I ran anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> your car breaks down on your way to a gig. Yeah. A very sketchy person pulls up and offers to drive you the rest of the way. Cowboy stay or cowboy go? Cowboy go, in the sense I'm not getting in that car. Um, <laughs> y- yeah, I, I for sure, that's that's happened. That happened last summer in the Tim Hicks tour. I, uh, my car... Um, Explain yourself. My car broke down. Well, I mean, the, re- the real thing that happened was i went i went to the wrong venue like on the other side of like oh no yeah it was it was like it was like three hours away from where i was supposed to be so that that was like that was like the main <laughs> issue but did you like <laughs> was that panic did, did, like did you panic oh oh yeah oh yeah for sure 
um it was yeah because like i i'd showed up for for sound check which was like 6 p.m the show was at eight and uh i get to the venue and um well but so like prior to me actually getting to the venue the car did break down like i had um taken a turn or something and it's like this new car and um it just like all the computers just freaked out and it like stopped me i had to like pull off and like call subaru and like try and deal with it and it was like a whole thing so i was already feeling like i was like super late and then i get to the venue for sound check there was a lot of people there already and i was like oh man like i'm like oh, really no. late i was like crap like i didn't realize i stepped go to step out of the car and this woman she goes oh like i didn't know all the grandkids were coming and then i was like <laughs> i was like Oh, oh no! And then I realized, like, I was at a wedding, like, oh, you know, no. at the venue that was supposed to be for the next week. Dustin Bird, say, the wedding crasher. Fuck this up in three hours. <laughs> yeah, well, because I read that, like, we were playing that venue the following Monday, but I read the wrong call sheet. Um, I clicked the wrong call sheet in my email, so I put that address in. I didn't realize. I didn't read the date. Um, so yeah. So I and then I called. Uh, Tim's tour manager, his name's also Tim, and I was like, hey, like, so my car is a little messed yes. up, can't really go over 80, it doesn't <laughs> seem, and um, probably gonna be a few hours late, and and he's like, oh, he's like, okay, well, you can probably just go home. <laughs> I was like, I was like <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, oh, it was, it was a, it was a rough one, I was like, oh, okay, that was a, a really dumb mistake. We're going to wrap up our best of episode of the clip from Taylor Ray. Her, Logan, and Jenna discuss the woes of social media and specifically going viral on TikTok. Before this final clip and Logan's exit speech, I just want to thank you again for listening to On the Porch with Front Porch Music. Again, none of this would be possible without you guys listening to us, and we really appreciate it. Make sure to give Front Porch a follow on all kinds of social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and keep up with us on our website, frontporchmusic.ca. Again, we are so excited to come back in 2023 with season two of On the Porch. But until then, take care. Logan went viral on TikTok. I went viral on TikTok. Shut up, what? I mean, I don't know if it's actual viral, but like we're going to call it viral. It's almost 100,000 views. Yeah. I would call that viral. It's no big deal. Thank you. Oh my God. Twice. <laughs> you went viral How twice. did you do twice. it? Um, a shot in the dark. Yeah, I, I, wish, I, I, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I... He had an idea at three o'clock in the morning and texted me about it at seven o'clock in the morning, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> about like... Well, because like, okay, like, let's step this back a bit. Like I was, during the pandemic, I was scrolling TikTok and then one day I was like, I'm wasting so many hours on TikTok. I need to do something productive with TikTok or with something in general. Yeah. <laughs> and then like the pandemic was just like, yeah. there's nothing else to do. It's like, let's just make some TikTok videos. I was like, let's do it for front porch because then it makes me feel like it's part of the business. <laughs> 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 it's an excuse to be there so i was like trying to think of things to do and then it was like three o'clock in the morning i woke up i was like oh i think i have an idea for like for a feature like a little series let me text jenna and see if this is actually like a good idea or if it's just like one of those stupid 3 a.m ideas that are actually stupid yeah um so i so i, I texted jenna and i was like what do you think about doing a series of like of of can you, of classic country songs that you that you forgot about not even classic, just huge country songs that you forgot about. Um, yeah. And she was like, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. So, like, it, wow. I did a couple and it, like, yeah. it did really well. There was a short, he did, a, you did a whole series. There was, like, eight parts. Yeah, I want to do more, but they, wow. But when you stop going viral, it's less motivating to do it. I believe <laughs> it. That's amazing, though. I actually don't know how people go viral. Like, I've put it, I put it decent amount of time into my very first tiktok and i thought it was hilarious and i like, <laughs> wait a minute i want to watch it <laughs> it's um it's like getting from your car to your apartment in covid times hmm. I'm going and to. um it's like mission impossible themed and i thought it was so funny i'm gonna and play it. it got like 200 views <laughs> we're gonna live that so that's depressing? so <sighs> jenna knows all about that <laughs> the look that jenna just gave me <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on On The Porch with From Porch Music. I love talking to artists and digging deep into the world of Canadian country music, and I'm so excited you joined. If you liked this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. That's the easiest way for you to support this show. You may even get a shout out. So we'll see you in a couple weeks next time on The Porch.
On the Porch with Front Porch Music is hosted by me, Logan Miller, and Jenna Weiser. The theme song was written, produced, and performed by Owen Wrigley. 